In this video, we discuss learning outcome number four from lesson 4.1, which is all about the rare event rule for inferential statistics. We're going to use it to infer whether a certain number of successes is significantly high or significantly low as well. So here's the rule. It says, if under a given assumption, the probability of a particular observed event is very small and the observed event occurs significantly less often or significantly more often than what we would what we would typically expect um, given that assumption, then we can conclude that the assumption is probably not correct. I know that that's a lot. Um, let's try to break it down just a little bit. Let's look at that first part of the sentence. It says, if under a given assumption, so we're assuming something is true. We assume this is true. Then we say under that assumption, there, the probability of a particular observed event is X. It's this amount. If that probability is very small based on that assumption, and then we observe the event and we observe that observed event occurs significantly more often than we would expect or significantly less often than we would expect given that assumption. So the probability is small and then it keeps happening. This other thing keeps happening. Then we would say that um, the assumption must be incorrect. There must be something wrong with what we assumed at the very beginning because the probability was supposed to be small and it's occurring, this event is occurring much more often or much less often than we would expect. Um, so this is called the rare event rule. It's very important in statistics. It's one of the most important rules of statistics and it plays an essential role in hypothesis testing, which we're going to discuss more uh, toward the end of the semester. So this is just a preview of this idea of hypothesis testing to help you wrap your mind around this rare event rule of inferential statistics. So here's a claim. This is an actual claim made by some researchers. They said, we've developed a gender selection method that greatly increases the likelihood of a baby being a girl. You say, okay. Now we're going to use a test or a hypothesis when testing this claim. And the hypothesis is actually that the gender selection method um, doesn't work. Uh, the method of gender selection has no effect. Now, in other words, we're saying that if there is a 50% chance of having a boy and a 50% chance of having a girl in a birth, um, when you use the method, that doesn't change at all. Um, about 50% of the births will result in baby girls. So our assumption here, that underlying assumption that we're making is that the method of gender selection has no effect so we would expect about 50% of the births to result in girls. So keep that in mind with our rare event rule. The assumption is that the selection method has no effect. Okay, now there are some results of studies listed in our textbook. I've put those on the slides. I don't know if these are the results of real studies um, or if these are the results of studies that were invented um, to give you a, a concrete example to wrap your mind around, um, but I'm using these uh, statistics and the results that are um, outlined in our text. So let's say here's our first study. We're going to call it study A. Let's say they had 100 births in their sample and 75 of those births ended up being girls and 25 of those births ended up being boys. Say, wow, okay, 75, 25, that's a pretty good split. Now, later we're going to discuss how to find the probability of obtaining this result by chance. And that's much later in the semester, but let's just assume um, that we are able to come up with this probability. And it turns out that the probability of obtaining 75 girls out of the 100 births by chance is three in 10 million or 0 0.0000003. Um, that's very unlikely to occur by chance. So we say, since that's so unlikely to occur by chance, it must be the case that that gender selection method is working. That gender selection method that was supposed to lead to more girls being born than boys um, led to these results, it led to these numbers. So we can reject chance as a reasonable explanation. And then if we're rejecting chance as a reasonable explanation, we're also saying that that hypothesis that the gender selection method doesn't work, um, it was wrong. Um, so our conclusion is that the gender selection method appears to be effective. We've got sample data that suggests that that um, gender selection method is effective. So we are um, 
rejecting chance as a reasonable possibility because the probability of this happening due to chance is so small because three in 10 million is just so unlikely um, that the hypothesis that there was no effect um, due to sele gender selection uh, must be wrong. Okay, so that's one thing that could have happened. That's the result of study A. Now let's say in study B, this is what we see. There are 55 girls and 45 boys. Now you might say, oh, there are more girls than boys here, but 55 out of 100, that's really not that different than 50. Um, and then we might say, okay, is there a way to measure the probability of obtaining this result by chance? It turns out there is, and we're gonna talk about that later this semester. Um, and we get this number using methods that we'll discuss later this semester. It turns out that the probability of obtaining this result by chance is 184 out of 1,000 or 0 0.184. Now 0 0.184, that's a number between zero and one, that's a probability. But if we want to interpret that, we might, uh, convert it to a percentage. So this we're saying this is saying, excuse me, that there is an 18.4% chance or there is 18.4% chance of obtaining this result by chance. So we could obtain 55 girls out of 100 just by chance and the probability of that happening um, is or about 18.4% which, you know, and then we have to convert to that uh, decimal or fraction between zero and one. 18.4% is, I mean, that could happen. Something that has 18.4% chance of happening um, could definitely happen. Um, it could happen due to chance. So we're not going to reject chance as a reasonable explanation here. Since we're not going to reject chance as a reasonable explanation, it doesn't make sense to throw out that original assumption that um, that the gender selection method has no effect. So here's our conclusion. We're not going to assume that the gender selection method is ineffective. We can't assume that. Um, there were slightly more girls than boys in our sample of 100, but we can't conclude, or it isn't reasonable to conclude that it's effective uh, based on getting 55 girls out of 100 babies. Does that make sense? We can't assume um, that it's ineffective, but we also can't conclude that it's effective. We can't throw out that initial assumption that 55 girls out of 100 babies could very well be due to chance. And then since it, since it could very well be due to chance, um, we shouldn't conclude that the gender selection method is effective. So we're not going to throw out our original assumption, which is that the gender selection method has no effect at all. Okay, now we're gonna get back into this a lot more later this semester, but the main takeaway is with the rare event rule, if you have something that is very unlikely to happen uh, due to chance, um, like we saw with study A, you have 75 girls out of 100 babies. There's only a three in 10 million chance of that happening. Um, we're gonna say, well, if, if there's a three in, men, a three in 10 million chance of that happening and it still happened, um, then maybe our underlying assumption was wrong and our underlying assumption was that there was going to be no effect of this gender selection method. So we're gonna get back to this later this semester. Um, but the idea is that we're gonna throw out um, assumptions that are associated with uh, very low probabilities um, when something has a very low probability of happening, but then it still happens. Okay, so that's our rare event rule for inferential statistics. It says, if under a given assumption, the probability of a particular observed event is very small. So we, we assume something is true and then it's very unlikely to occur. And we, the probability of some event is, is very small, meaning, meaning the event itself is very unlikely to occur. If then it occurs significantly more often or significantly less often than what we would typically expect given that initial assumption, we can conclude that the assumption is probably not correct. We should throw out that assumption and then make a different assumption. Um, and that's, that's the basis of hypothesis testing. So I, I put this in bold, I made the print uh, 
like very large, the, the font, uh, I forget what, you know, the, the font size, the, the text size, very large, because it's such an important point. Um, statisticians will reject explanations that are based on very low probabilities. Um, that's in bold here and it's highlighted because it's so important. It's a very important takeaway of this lesson. Um, now we can also use um, probabilities to identify uh, results that are significantly high or significantly low. Um, when we're looking at something that is um, either going to go one way or another. So when we talk about boys versus girls, we'd say there's, there's two possible outcomes here. You either get a boy or you get a girl. Um, at birth, that's what we're talking about. Um, and then we're, we're looking at lots of different uh, births. So let's, given that context, we're gonna talk about this idea of a significantly high number of successes. So we're gonna call success either one of those categories or the other. So we could call the, the female births success or we could call the male birth success. Either one is fine. Um, in the last case, because we were testing this hypothesis that the gender selection method led to girls, we would say that X number of girls is X number of successes among uh, N trials. And trials, that's the number of times you do this. So in our case, in that, that example, the number of trials would be 100 because we were looking at 100 births. So we've got 100 births, that's our N, that's our number of trials. and in that first example, you had 75 successes, excuse me. Um, so 75 girls um, born out of those 100 births. Now we're going to say that the X successes out of N trials is significantly high. It's a significantly high number of successes. If the probability of X or more successes is unlikely with a probability of 0.05 or less, you might be saying, okay, what does that mean? Let's put it in symbols. We're gonna say that X successes, having X successes out of N trials is significantly high. If the probability of getting um, X or more than X is less than or equal to 0.05, that's significantly high. And we're going to say we have a significantly low number of successes if we have X successes among N trials. Um, and the probability of X successes or fewer is unlikely with a probability of 0.05 or less. Now that 0.05, that's like a 5% chance of something happening, right? Um, that is just a number that we're going to use in our textbook and in our homework. Um, it's a commonly used uh, probability value um, for indicating like something that's significantly high or significantly low. Um, so that's what we're going to use in our text and in our class. And if you are in the social sciences, you're going to use this number 0 0.05 a lot, and we will label it differently later this semester. But that 0 0.05, that 5% chance, um, that's not absolutely rigid. Like you could use a 1% chance, you could use a 10% chance. Um, so you could change this number over here and you could say what I mean by significantly high is a probability of less than or equal to 10% or 0.1. Or what I mean by significantly low is a probability of less than 0.01, like 1% chance of something happening. Um, but 0.05 is what we'll use in our uh, text and in our class and in the homework. So keep that in mind. Now we didn't really do a lot of examples in this video. Um, the example that we looked at was that example from hypothesis testing. But this is the slide that's, that's most important when you go forward in your homework. Um, if you have a probability um, that's less than 0 0.05, the, if the probability of getting X or more successes is less than 0 0.05, we're gonna say that X is a significantly high number of successes. Um, or if the probability of getting X or less number of successes is less than or equal to 0 0.05. We're gonna say that getting X successes, that was significantly low. That was, it's very low. Uh, there's a less than 5% chance of getting that value or something more extreme than that value happening, actually happening. Um, I hope you understand that. Please uh, reach out to me if you don't, um, but try to wrap your mind around this idea. It's, it's really important and we're going to come back to it um, throughout the semester, and especially when we get to hypothesis testing um, at the very end of the semester.